Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. Today's presentation fleshes out with some additional facts some of the allegations that Alex Jones has made regarding Al Qaeda being armed by Western powers in Libya and Syria. The title of this presentation is The U.S. Saudi Gulf Islamist Axis. As state actors emerge who practice stricter Islamist. Islam, who benefits? Why is the U.S. backing Islamists in Syria, Lebanon, and Egypt? Libya is basically run by remnants of the Islamic fighting group. The Islamic fighting group waged a bitter war with the Libyan state, which is guided by Gaddafi, or was, who maintained he resigned from government to be a brother leader in 1978. So the U.S. knows the only trained fighters in Libya are the LIFG and the Berber, which is a non-Arab indigenous culture, a small minority uh, that practice arms and have a martial spirit. In Syria, we have an ethnic conflict between the 25% minority of which are Christians, Alawites, and so forth that uh, support the Assad regime along with many other people, and people which are people who don't wish to live in a Libya-like post-war situation. In Libya today, we have total insecurity, bombings, lynchings, rape, hostile practices towards blacks, females, and former government workers who comprised almost one-third of all workers in Libya, and the tribes that benefited under Gaddafi and the regions that benefited under Gaddafi. All these are being harassed, perhaps half of the country or more. A Gulf state, Qatar, supplied the Libyan Islamic jihadists with weapons and troops on the ground in violation of UN 1973. The Qataris definitely staged at least a thousand troops into Libya, or at least so they claim, and the West a few hundred. All of this in complete violation of the very resolution we ourselves drafted. Why will the Islamic states collapse? Uh, they will collapse if they are found to be inimical or incompatible with global supercapitalism. Corporations must grow. When markets become stagnant, the follow-on rebuilding of countries that we destabilize and overthrow provide growth to corporations. In the case of Syria, it was perfect timing to bury the massacre of the Syrian satellite television journalists who had their hands bound behind their backs and were executed which occurred yesterday with a new report from the UN claiming that one of the massacres in Syria appeared to have been conducted largely by supporters of the Syrian state. This same action of massacring the television journalists was conducted in Libya. The TV station was bombed by NATO unapologetically. Meanwhile, our rights are stripped at home. Our lapdog Supreme Court does whatever the wealthy ask, becoming high-minded on less important issues without political or uh, significance to the large corporations. The health care bill was supported by the corporations because it provided a guaranteed new market of 40 million people that was largely paid for by taxpayers and new revenues. Growth. It has zero risk to the corporate profit lines. And the taxpayers foot the bill. The same is, is true with this form of invasion, supercapitalism. Converting Libya, Iraq, and Syria into countries that needed rebuilding, which was accomplished on the one hand by extracting resources, oil, from those countries to pay Western interests, and on the other hand, the American and the Western taxpayers footing the other half of the bill. All these things increase Western business growth in many key industries arms, consultants, construction, vendors, oil industry, and the media. In the case of Afghanistan, we have a strategic forward base in Central Asia, a perfect platform from which to attack Russia, Pakistan, India, and China, all of which are difficult to get to from our current bases. This requires that these countries, Russia, India, China, Pakistan, spend resources guarding this frontier, which helps the arms industry in their countries and globally. The whole thing should be a nightmare that we couldn't even dream of but it is occurring. It is a bitter farce that is conducted under the noses of a largely unsuspecting, disinformed population. This all suits Barack Obama just fine. He's been called Bush on steroids. The statement was meant to warn humanity and Democrats, but this gets an ignorant population of pro-U.S. global domination likely to vote for him on national security, which he outpolls Romney in. He attempts to shore up his progressive base through a temporary amnesty to illegal aliens 
children uh, that meet certain criteria, which might add a million votes to his coffers. Considering that this amnesty would likely be halted under a Romney administration, he certainly hasn't said he would continue it. <clears throat> An important additional connection is that the Qatari arms in Libya were funneled into Syria via Lebanon, but were in intercepted there by the Lebanese. In the case of Syria, the Saudis have declared that they will arm the Syria Free Army, which is comprised largely of Islamic extremists. Churchill said, Hitler's method, I remind you, is one at a time. It is really Russia we are damaging the national interests of, in addition to the unfortunate Syrians and Libyans and Iraqis. We have taken out three of four uh, remaining Arab socialist states, which had a kinship and a traditional alliance with the Soviet Union. Only Algeria remains. Socialism tends to restrict access to uh, penetration by our corporations of, uh, of those nations. The newly empowered Islamists will bide their time consolidating their gains, treating the West as an ally, as it creates conjunction with their friendly relations uh, with Saudi Arabia and the monarchist Gulf states, which are also strict Islamists. These conservative states support Sunni Muslims, who are the core of the opposition in Syria. Saudi Arabian Wahhabi Islam is the Islam practiced by the Libya Islamic Fighting Group, which now largely controls Libya, and the Muslim Brotherhood, which controls Egypt. Although North Africa, it is a cousin of Wahhabism called Salafism. But surely these steps have been anticipated by the planners of these interventions. Now let us look at whether our interests would dovetail with Islamists. Do the Gulf states and Saudi Arabia provide full access and investment security to Western companies? Yes, they do. Do they permit U.S. bases to operate? Yes, they do. Do we criticize them? No, we don't. We haven't criticized the human rights violations in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and such. It's simply put, Syria has been marked for destabilization. The Western and monarchist oil states are flooding it with arms and pressure. For the record, Syria's population is 74% Sunni, who have not been at the top of the food chain in Syria, as Assad is an Alawite. 16% of the Syrian population is other Muslim groups, which includes the Alawite, the Shia, and the Druze. And then 10% are Christian, with a tiny Syrian Jewish community. Uh, now, in the case of Libya, to, uh, the loyalists have done three things. They have uh, gone underground in the sense that they have uh, gone back to their tribal affiliations. Um, those that haven't gone underground in such fashion have been kidnapped and tortured, with the largest torture camps in the world currently occurring in Libya, especially per capita. About one in every 60 Libyans is being tortured right now. Uh, and, and they've also gone underground. So when the former president, Baghdadi, was illegally transferred from Tunisia yesterday, it was claimed that he was beaten and a lung punctured by Bel Hajj, the commander of Tripoli, who uh, was fought in uh, Iraq and fought, well, he fought in Afghanistan for sure, but Libya extremists supplied most of the troops to Iraq that, in the insurgency against us. Libya maintained the highest standard of living in Africa and virtually the entire Middle East, similar to Chile and Argentina in terms of its human development score, because there was, and there was little class inequity or inequality. They, they distributed their oil revenues to their population better than virtually any other country. For the population, these oil revenues were distributed to produce the longest lifespan, more years of education per citizen in the U.S., a quarter of prisoners, uh, basically free gas, free cars, free health care, free bread, free housing, and free higher education. It was a tightly uh, controlled police state, but it produced a well-educated, uh, healthy, but somewhat unmotivated population, as this pretty much covers everything. And finally, in conclusion, I would like to say that a Gallup opinion poll of Middle Eastern countries shows every Muslim nation's population does not support the Libyan intervention. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.